Give the Lord the praise. Give the Lord the praise. Let's give the Lord the praise. The Lord is worthy. Oh, yes, he's worthy. Let's give the Lord the praise. Come on, saints, here we go. Give the Lord the praise. Give the Lord the praise. Let's give the Lord the praise. The Lord is worthy. Oh, yes, he's worthy. Let's give the Lord the praise. Give the Lord the praise. Give the Lord the praise. Let's give the Lord the praise. The Lord is worthy. Oh, yes, he's worthy. Let's give the Lord the praise. Amen, amen. God bless you, children of God. We do greet each one of you in the mighty and the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, our strength and our Redeemer. God has brought us through and carried us through another week as we are here at the first day of the week. We give God praise. We give God glory. We give God the honor. For those of you that have been worshiping with us, you know we have started our new topic entitled what? Miraculous catch. The Miraculous Catch. In scripture, you will see miraculous catches. Now, the thing we got to keep in mind is that uh, what is caught miraculously is not always something that we want. The same way we can have a miraculous catch of fish or a miraculous healing, or mir we can also have a miraculous uh, catch of a disease or the miraculous uh, catch of uh, uh, some problem. So we want to try and be in a position, children of God, where uh, we are receiving the miraculous in the positive with God. The miraculous in the positive. Uh, I'm going to share something with you briefly. Then we want to bring Bishop Levy to the podium. Uh, he only has a couple of days left with us and we want to uh, be blessed by him some more i was talking with one of our deacons earlier today that um, lives in the area that is relatively close to where bishop levy will be going back to and i was telling him how pleased I was to know that the Christian Center Church worldwide in Liberia, West Africa, was in very good and very capable hands. I told him, I said, I said, Deacon, I said, this is a, he's a beautiful young man, you know, who loves God and has a word for this generation. See, we got to keep in mind that, that as prophets or as speakers for God, we're supposed to have a word for this generation, whether it's a word of rebuke, whether it's a word of correction. The scripture says that all scripture, the Bible says all scripture is God breathed and it's profitable for the doctrine, correction, instruction, 
and in righteousness. You know, we got to have a word to help individuals uh, do right. That is our job. We're not here to entertain. We're not here to put on any show for people. We're here to tell them what thus saith the Lord. And I told him, I said, I believe this young man is doing this in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, we said we're talking about the miraculous what? The miraculous catch. We want to take a look at Luke briefly, the fifth chapter. And man of God, you're going to come on up shortly, right after I just share this with the saints and, and let the Lord lead you. In Luke chapter 5, we have Jesus calling his first disciples. Jesus calling his first disciples. And we're going to focus in on verse 6 today. Luke chapter 5, verse 6. From the New International Version, our scripture reads, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. Once again, from the New International Version, Luke chapter 5, verse 6, when they had what? Done so. Done so. They caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. We're still talking about the miraculous catch. catch. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we honor you today. This is the first day of the week. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for bringing us into a week that we have never seen before. There are some individuals who saw last week, but they did not see this week. You have allowed us to see a new week, a new day. We appreciate you. We honor you. We reverence you. Father, you have told us that it is good and pleasant for brethren to come together, to dwell together in unity. We want your spirit to have his way in our midst today. Speak to us, speak through us, and speak for us. Give us clear direction in our lives, in our marriages, in our finances, in our ministries. Give us what you want us to possess. Give us this day our daily bread. We will be very careful, Father, to give your name all glory, all honor, and all praise. For you are worthy from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Speak to us, Father. We present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to you. This is our spiritual act of worship. Father, we do not plan to conform any longer to the pattern of this world. But rather, we will be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Then we will be able to test and approve what your will is, your good, pleasing, and perfect will. Speak to us, Father. Forgive us of our sins and our iniquities, which we have committed in either thought, word, or deed, lead and guide us today into a more acceptable path for you. Have mercy on us, Lord. Your little children have gathered together this morning and crossing around the world to hear from your the storehouse of wisdom. We know that you will not disappoint us, Father. These and all other blessings we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, our strength and our Redeemer. Let God's people say amen. Luke chapter 5. We find verses 1 through 11. Our Lord and Savior was bringing into the fold his first disciples. 
Now, you've got to understand, child of God, that these were men just like we are. Some of them had not met God before. So for some of them, walking with God and getting to know God and getting to know how God operated was new to them. This was not the Peter that preached on the day of Pentecost and 3,000 souls were saved. This was not the Peter who was seasoned in the things of God to where he was able to preach boldly, even though being threatened with being crucified upside down. This was Peter just coming out of the flesh. And God working an extraordinary miracle to encourage you, child of God. If you are under the sound of my voice, God is going to work an extraordinary miracle in your life. The Bible says that one day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. Now, just like many of you all are doing, those of you that are here, those of you that are listening on your iPads, uh, listening on your through YouTube, those of you that are listening through Speedcast, they were listening. And, 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 and that's a beautiful thing for you and I to listen to the word of God. For faith comes by, come on somebody, hearing and hearing by the word of God. But God has sent me here this morning to let you know that listening is not all. Listening is just the start of your blessings. Some of you all under the sound of my voice, you think just going to church today was enough. God says, no, no, no. Let them know, Robert, that listening is just a start. God says at least they have started. But God says by no means are they finished. Praise the living God. So the people were listening. The people had, had gotten started on their journey of blessings. You say, Apostle, what are you saying to me? I'm saying to you that listening to the word of God is the start of your journey to blessings. Now, if listening to the word of God or since listening to the word of God is the start of our journey to blessings, then what we need to understand is that the more we listen to, the more blessings we put ourselves in position for. Some of you wonder, why do we at the Christian Center worship every day instead of once a week, like most churches, like most ministries? Well, first of all, because when the church was first established on the day of Pentecost, God did not have his people meeting one day out of the week. He did not have his people meeting on Sundays with Bible study on Wednesday night. He had those saints meeting every day. Acts chapter 2 verse 46. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple court. Now, that's not going to be real popular. Why? Because people got other things they want to do. And if you got other things you want to do or other things you think that are necessary, then that's between you and the Lord. But as for me and my household, Somebody, come on, talk about it. Didn't, didn't Joshua, what didn't Joshua say? Joshua said, I ain't talking about you and your household. I ain't talking about you and your ministry. I ain't talking about you and your church. He said, but as for me and my household, there's a certain way we're going to do it. Well, as children of God, I encourage you, since hearing the word of God is the start of our blessings, let's put ourselves in position for as many of God's blessings as we can get our hands on. I've never you want as many of God's blessings as you can get. Raise your hand. All right, I saw, I saw, hey, me too. All right, let me raise my hand. When God says, hearing me is what puts you in position. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the disciples were listening to the word of God and he saw, Jesus saw by the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing his nets. He got into one of the boats, one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. Now, here's the thing, and I pray you keep this in mind. Anytime you look into a society, into a church, into a culture, into a nation, 
and you see problems. The, the problem is always because they have not been taught right somewhere. Always keep that in mind. As black Americans, you all know it's true. There ain't no need to try and act like it's not. We got a big problem in our culture. Our young people are involved in gangs. Uh, sexual immorality is a big problem. Uh, uh, drug abuse. What was the problem? What is the real problem? There's been a problem in the teaching that has gone on. When you see people behaving wrongly, it has been some false teaching that has gone on somewhere. Or there has been some teaching that has gone on that has not been sound. My prayer for you is that you will be under sound teaching in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The only way to a sound life, to a sound lifestyle, is through sound teaching. This is why Jesus taught every day in the temple courts. What Jesus realized, thank you, Holy Spirit, God is speaking to me now. What Jesus realized was that the devil was doing a masterful job teaching people crazy stuff. Teaching people the wrong way to treat their wives, the wrong way to treat their husbands, the wrong way to deal with their children, the wrong way to work on their job. The adversary spends, oh, spends overtime teaching people the wrong way. Jesus came in and spent overtime teaching people the the right way may you be taught the right way may all of our ministers in the christian center church worldwide teach people the right way only sound doctrine you hear us in in the beginning of this broadcast uh I, I, hello this is apostle brian pastor of the christian center, where sound doctrine is brought to the ears of thousands of god's people all over the world all we want to teach is sound doctrine sound doctrine jesus taught sound doctrine jesus desires for us to teach sound doctrine he put out from shore and he began to teach the people and the bible says when he had finished speaking now you say apostle what, what, what is this now understand that there is a time for us to listen to the word and then there's a time for us to put the word into practice. Mm. We don't just listen, listen, listen all the time. We don't just practice, practice, practice all the time. Even as a basketball coach, which many of you know I was for many years, I would spend so much time teaching my athletes, but then we would spend a whole lot more time practicing what we had been taught now god blessed us with success and championships here and there some of you many of you remember you know north of no basketball well what did we do we spent we got we received sound doctrine and then we were made to put it into practice i'm here to let you know god wants to give us the same thing in christianity he wants to give us sound doctrine and then he wants to make us practice it what God is about to do with the disciples right here is make them practice what they have just heard. What God, what, what is stopping some of you under the sound of my voice from receiving the blessing that God wants to give to you is you're not putting into practice what God has given you. My prayer for you from the day, you will only put into practice what God has given you when he had finished speaking god said all right jesus said teaching time is over it's time for you to get to work some of you under the sound of my voice you've been taught plenty you don't talk you haven't heard enough word now for for two lifetimes it's time to get to work some of you pastors under the sound of my voice christian center pastors you've heard enough it's time to get to work the beautiful thing I love about this vision, the Christian Center Church worldwide, is that some of our pastors and bishops catch the vision early and go. Some of our pastors and bishops catch the vision a little later before they go. But the important thing is that you go with the vision. In life, some of us get saved early in life. Meet Jesus early. Because all getting saved is, is you met Jesus. 
Now, if you claim that you saved out there under the sound of my voice and you have not met Jesus, then you 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 and you're not really saved. Because what being saved is, is we have met Jesus. We've all had to have our Damascus Road experiences. Come on, somebody. Damascus Road experience it just means an experience where we went from not knowing Jesus Christ, come on, to where we know him. My prayer for you is that you know him and that you know him even better. When Jesus had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the net for the catch. It's a teaching time is over right now. I want you to do this thing. Now, what God wants to show us here is that your blessing, your ultimate blessing will be in the doing of this thing. What did verse six said? When they had what? Done so. Not just when they had listened, not just when they had studied, not just when, when they had done so. I want to see God's people go to a done so place in God. Because that's where we will find the blessings. I was talking with one of the deacons earlier today, and we were talking at length. That's even why we're, we're a little late this morning. Saints, forgive us. But um, Deacon and I were talking about uh, an investment that he had suggested to me last, last year. He had talked about us getting involved in an investment last year and i think the 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 item that we were looking at investing in was at a certain amount when he first suggested it to me but because we didn't do it we were still going to check it out and we were still going to plan and we were still going to look into it a little further now the investment is about seven hundred dollars more than or worth seven hundred dollars more than what it was when he first suggested it to me. You say, Apostle, what are you trying to let us know? Because we didn't do so, we lost on some things. That had we done it, we'd have been $700 uh, up and richer. Had we went on and done so. You say, Apostle, what, what are you trying to get us to understand? When we don't listen to God, we miss out on something. We miss out on some blessing. We miss out on some increase. Some uh, We miss out on something. Let us get in the habit of doing so. When we know it's God, let's go ahead on and, and get with God early and move with God early. Abraham, one of the reasons why he was so blessed was that when God would call him, Abraham's response would be, here I am, Lord. Lord be like, go sacrifice your son. Abraham be like, here we go. Early the next morning, Abraham, early the next morning, God here, take, God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, and go sacrifice him on one of the mountains. Abraham was like, here we go. Early the next morning, let's go. Some of us would have been like, that's my baby, Lord. That's the one. I, that's the one. See, 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 see. Abraham, immediate obedience to God will bring immediate blessings from God. What? To God will bring immediate blessings from God. Praise God. Now God instructed the disciples, go and let down the nets, go in the deep water, let down the nets for a catch. Now look at this now, because here's what some of us are, because you got three responses to the word of God. God has just given instruction. I always put this down and remember, you got three responses to the word of God. The first thing Peter does is he answers the Lord. God has given an instruction, put out into deep water, let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered. Bible says, Simon answered. Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. Now, some of us are doing that to God. We keep right on talking about God and told us what to do, how to come out of poverty. God and told us what to do in the ministry. God and told us what to do as far as this and that. We still answering God. We still trying to tell God about what we've been through. 
we still trying to tell God how God don't need to know from you and me or what we've been through. God know what you've been through. God know what I've been through. God said, I know what all of y'all been through. What is you keep right on telling what you've been through to God for like he don't know. God said, I know some of you were abused as little children. God said, I know some of you. Well, I know you. some of you didn't have this, you didn't have that. Ah, God said, I already know. Peter answered. But here's the thing, children of God. Because some of you all are stuck on answering God. You are stuck in answering mode, but you still haven't got any fish. God said, I know what you've been through, and I know what you've been doing last night. And But I also know you don't have any fish. And what I'm trying to do is tell you how to catch what? Fish. I'm trying to tell you how to experience the miraculous catch. Is anybody hearing God this morning? Quit telling God a whole lot about a bunch of, bunch of stuff. God, listen, God know everything. Past, present, and future. Sure, we, you know, we share our testimonies and we share different things that we've been through, but 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 that's just to share with other people so they'll know. Not that when we go to God, I'm telling God, you know, Lord, when I was 16, I was on my own. When I was 17, Lord, I was locked up by the police. Lord, you know, God, I don't need to hear that stuff. <laughs> God said, I already know. So I, I want to encourage you, child of God, get in the habit. Or quit telling God a whole bunch of a whole bunch of stuff he don't need that he already know. And find out what he is telling you to do what? Now. God knew what the disciples had done all night. That's why he was telling them to do something different now. God, what are you telling us now? I know what I have done in the Christian Center for, for the last uh, 20 years, but Lord, what you telling me to do now? I know who, who I've been dealing with for the last 20 years, but Lord, what, should, what shall I do now? Again, like Paul asked the Lord on Damascus Road, Lord, what shall I do? The question is, what about what now? Now. So let's quit answering God. When he done told us what to do. Let's quit answering God when he done told us what to do. Well, watch this now. This is the second thing people can do with, 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 when God gives them instruction. Peter said, but because you say so, I will let down the net. Now, the next thing we can do with God, and man, God get ready to preach now because I'm getting tired now. The next thing we can do is we can agree with God. Some of you all under the sound of my voice, you got that down. You in agreement with what God has said. Yep, that's right, Pastor. Yep, that's right, Apostle. Yep, Apostle, I should be contributing more to the ministry. Yes, Apostle, I should. But see, that still don't get you any fish. Just agreeing with God don't just get you any fish. That's a beautiful thing to agree. To agree with what the man of God say. To agree with what the woman of God say. To agree. It's just a good thing. Don't get me wrong. But it don't get you any fish. You don't see Peter with any fish. Just agreeing. Some of y'all in there. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Well, preach, pastor. Yeah, but I, what? you ain't still ain't going to get no fish. Just agreeing. They agreeing. But because you say so, Lord. Lord, you say so. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, Lord. Yeah, but you ain't done it yet. Some of you are telling ministry, Pastor, I'm going to bless the ministry. I'm going to, boy, Pastor, I'm going to be a blessing. I'm going to be a You sound real good, but you haven't done it yet. And the blessings of God come with the doing of God's word. Is anybody understanding the whole story? I'm getting ready to sit down now. I want to I want to hear what the uh, bishop got to say this morning. Because you say so. I will let down the nets. Let's don't just be agreeing with God. That ain't enough. That ain't enough. It's it's beautiful, and and you know, but you got to be careful because the adversary will fool you and have you thinking that just agreeing with God, being in agreement with the with, with with the man of God is enough. No, it's not. No, it's not. The Bible says when they had done so. The third stage is action or acted on the word. 
That's what I want to encourage each one of you under the sound of my voice, whether you are near, far, wherever you are in this world. Get in the habit of acting on God's word. Get in the habit of doing what God has said, because that's where you will find the fullness of the blessing when we do. Wisdom is not just agreeing with the word. Wisdom is not just uh, answering the word. Wisdom is when we what? The, uh, applying the knowledge. That means we are doing what we know. We are doing what wisdom we is a, a short, easy deprivation for me, for, for you all on the sound of my voice. Wisdom is doing like God say. If you ever wonder, what is one word of wisdom? Wisdom, real, true wisdom is doing just what God say. When they had what? When they had what? Let's get together, saints. When they had done so. When we do this thing. You know, I know part of the reason why some of these health challenges have, have happened to, to Robert Bryant. Y'all don't have to know that ain't bad. I know why. God said, Robert, what about my vision? I was like for years, oh, Lord, let me go to this country. Let me preach in that country. God said, what about my vision? Now, well, ah, oh, Lord, come on, when I get back now, as soon as I get back, I'm like, Lord, what would the Lord be like? Robert, what about my vision? Ah, oh, Lord, come on now, I got to go, I got to go, I got to go. God said, all right, I'm going to fix this thing up. So for a little while, <laughs> you can't go nowhere. And what you do is get to work on what? My vision. Not a, <laughs> thank you, Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you so much, Father. As difficult as it has been, as, as, as just thank you. Get to work. And I'm hearing God speak in the spirit, not just to me, but to as many children of God as are under the sound of my voice. God is saying, Robert, tell them to get to work on my vision. I don't know what, see, because if we're children of God, all of our visions are connected in some way. Like a jigsaw puzzle. All the pieces to a jigsaw puzzle are connected in some way, even though they may be far, far from each other. Even though you may be in Liberia, Bishop, our visions are connected. What's the name of that, that new worship center y'all building down there? Tell me that again. The name, the name of that new, it would, give me the name of that ministry again. Transformation. Transformation. Worship Center is connected with the Christian Center. And the Christian Center is connected with Transformation Worship Center. We don't make, we maybe don't know all how. But just like, look at us. We are the body of what? Christ. My right, my left finger is connected to my right foot. Now they, they, they why? Because they're members of the same body. So I, we're connected, children of God. If you're a child of God watching this ministry, uh, I don't care where you at. You might be in India somewhere. That's why the Christian Center, we are a worldwide ministry. We have written on the board, what does it say? Worldwide ministry. Because the church is all of God's people throughout all times, throughout all generations. I'm connected to the vision of the Apostle Paul. You connected to the vision because they were God's people. And all of us are the body of Christ. All of us are connected. Saints that have died and gone on, we connected to them. Oh, come on, children of God. We are connected. There is one Lord. There is one faith. There is one baptism. Now you thinking because you are Pentecostal and I'm a holiness and, and he's a Baptist and I'm a, that, that, that God ain't thinking about that stuff. God is not the one to put that nonsense in the play. Men did. We are Christians, which are followers of who? Christ. All right, let me let me go. Let me go. When they had done so. So I want to encourage you. Get in the habit of doing so. You want to see God's power and operation in your life, in your marriage, in your ministry? Just get in the habit of doing so. Don't just think about getting your wife some roses. Do it. Don't just think about uh, uh, doing something nice for your husband. Do it. Don't just think about being a blessing to your parents or, you, you know, do it. Get in the habit of doing it. And you'll see the power of God. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish. Well, God was showing us something. He was, he was, he, it was a parable. It was a real life example. 
God was letting his disciples know thousands of years ago that when you do like God say, you get an uncommon blessing. When you do like God say, you go to uncommon places. When you do like God say, you meet uncommon people. When you get in that, Jesus, Jesus gave his disciples a little test. I was a teacher for 15, 20 years. Every, day, every, every Friday, I was giving my students a test, a test to find out if you really got this thing or you just been in here wasting time. We used to get tests after service. Jesus gave his disciples a test. He didn't taught them. He didn't talk to them. Now let me see if y'all gonna like y'all gonna do the word, because that's what the word is all about. Us doing it for the blessings of God. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. In other words, there were so many fish for them that they couldn't handle it all. And it reminds me of what God is doing in this ministry. This is a scripture the Lord always hit me in the face with when coming down to this ministry. Every day we're getting pastors, we're getting bishops, we're getting different individuals from overseas. I'm having to connect individuals here, there. Pastor, neither one bishop came in from Nigeria, but that's over 400 pastors. Once he got the vision, took a while to convince him. Now it was, it was kind of like Peter. He was doing a lot of talking, a lot of talking. But once he got a vision, he came back to me and said, Apostle, he said, we are with you, Daddy. He said, my people are as your people. He said, we are with you. We're a bishop, over 400 pastors, my senior. But he caught the vision. He caught the vision. May you catch God's vision for your life in the name of Jesus. May you catch God's vision for your ministry in the name of Jesus. May you catch God's vision. Because in God's vision, in the name of Jesus, it, it will change your life. It will change your finances. It will change your marriage. It will change. It will change. But, but you got to catch the vision. You got to catch the vision. These disciples caught the vision. And they caught so much, such a large number that the nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. Yeah. When God really start blessing you, when you go, when you really, when you really blessed by God, you you gotta you gotta get some other folk involved. And, and when you really been blessed by God, because God remember, all of our visions are connected. You had to get some help. Ain't no way in the world I could do all of what God and, and handle all of what God is sending the, the Christian son away by myself. No way. I can't preach in, in Kenston, North Carolina and oversee the Christian center church in Liberia, man of God. I need you. I can't listen. Deacon, I can't preach at the Christian center church and handle the saints that are up in the uh, northeast of the United States. Deacon, I need you. I can't preach at the Christian Center Church and handle all the saints that is in uh, India. Uh, Bishop Kara, I need you. And we just use those as examples. We need each other to handle what God is giving to us. What the Bible say? They signaled their partners in the other boats to come and help them. So they came and filled their boat so full. So I'm at the same way I'm at maximum capacity with what's going on with the Christian Center. I expect you to be at maximum capacity to have to signal others in other boats to come and help them. So full, so full that they began to sink. God wants to do something extra special in our lives, children of God. And the way to, for us to get there, I'm going to sit down because I'm going to hit a bishop. The way for us to get there is to get in the habit of doing it. What God said may not be the most popular thing, may not be, you know, every people might look at us like we crazy. That's why when we first went to everyday worship, people around here looked at us like we were crazy. Well, don't you know there's some countries where people where everyday worship is just what people do. You all look at us like we crazy for worshiping every day. I look at y'all as being crazy for worshiping one day out of the week or two days out of the week. I can't imagine what we would be doing if we didn't worship every day. What, what is there to do? Watch TV all the time. That's what some of you want to do. Play uh, games, all the uh, play game, video games. Talk on the telephone, talk on the internet. That's what some of us want to do. No, 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 no. Let's worship. Let's hear from God so we can tap into the blessing of God. God bless you. Heaven smile on you. We're going to have a short song by one of our saints. The next voice you will hear will be then none other than Bishop James Levy from Liberia, West Africa. God bless you and heaven smile on you.
Give the Lord the praise. Give the Lord the praise. Let's give the Lord the praise. The Lord is worthy. Oh, yes, he's worthy. Let's give the Lord the praise. Give the Lord the praise. Give the Lord the praise. Let's give the Lord the praise. The Lord is worthy. Oh, yes, he's worthy. Let's give the Lord the praise. Give the Lord the praise. Give the Lord the praise. Let's give the Lord the praise. The Lord is worthy. Oh, yes, he's worthy. Let's give the Lord the In Jesus' mighty name, Hallelujah. we Amen. want to bless God for this morning. We give God praise because He's worthy of our praise. Amen. We want to bless God for our apostle Brian, who are giving us the opportunity to experience the dramatic journey with God. And we believe that we can do more when we are together. And I want to encourage you out there. It's not about denomination. It's about the kingdom of God. And Jesus said unto Peter, lay down the net. Peter begins to complain about his roughness on the sea. God is not interested in how much we face the storm. And one thing God is interested in is lay down your net. Peter said, if you say so, I lay down the net. But what I want to understand in that scripture, the Bible says, there was a huge cash and the net was breaking. Peter had to call for an assistant to the next boat. That means you cannot handle the blessing of God alone. You cannot handle God's vision alone. You need partners that will help you share that vision. It's my honor to be here in the name of Jesus. And I want to dwell on one thing from that text. Just one thing that I want to dwell on. Peter said, I will lay down the net as you say. Every prophecy, every spoken word cannot come to pass until it is done. It is the doing aspect that brings about the miracles. He said, they have eyes to see, but they can't see. They have ears to hear, they can hear. They have heart to receive, but they can receive. Blessed are those who hear these words of mine and do them happy is he. So our happiness in ministry tied to the doing of the world. If you dare can do what God says, that the miracles is show. There is no devil can fight a man who is in obedience with God. Your obedience in the will of God 
subdue every weapons, subdue every attack, subdue. I have never seen a man who is obedient to the war and he's afflicted. The Bible said the miracle we look for is in the doing of the war. If we can do what God says, then we can see what he sees. If you can do what God say, you can see what he see. If you can do what God say, you can hear what he hear. So I want to emphasize on the doing of Peter. That was faith. 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 Your faith will determine your motion. Your faith will determine the level of speed you take in life. Faith is not a religious talk. No. Faith is a mystery in the word of God. In Mark chapter 9. In Mark chapter 9 verse 23. And Jesus said unto him, if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes if you can believe all things are possible i don't know what you are going through though your circumstances must be difficult to handle but if you can only believe what god say it can change and i prophesy to somebody out there in the name of jesus that situation will not remain there in the name of jesus there's a turning point in the mighty name of jesus if you can believe if you can believe if you can believe if you can believe peter believe him if you say so then i do it if you can say it i do it Peter laid down his nut and there was a miraculous cash. He saw the miracles of God. He saw the power of God. He saw the benefit of obedience. When you obey God, if you can trust God in every word that comes from the word of God, your love has no, no reason to be put down and i see you getting there in the name of jesus somebody is walking in total obedience in the mighty name of jesus if you can believe peter believed that why he lay if you can believe the father says can change if you can believe the healing is sure if you can believe the man at the pool of bethesda jesus asked him do you want to be healed? He said, You don't understand. I've been sitting here for the past 38 years. I don't, I'm not, I'm not asking you how long you've been there. For I know how long you've been there. I know. I saw you. This is the reason why I came. This is the reason why I came. Because I knew you was there. I saw that no one to put you there. You unable to get into the pool. Every time you try to make an effort, and next someone will come and spring, you become a springboard for the next person. I saw it. That's why I come. Do you want to be? Stop explaining to Jesus about your problem. Start asking him, Lord, what are you saying? What can I do? Peter said, if you say so, I do. We must come to the place to understand that in the kingdom of God, it takes faith. To put the hands of God in motion. It takes faith. You must believe what he says. 
Yeah, those that come to God must believe that God exists and he's the rewarder of those that seek him diligently. You must believe that God is there. Now, if you know that God is in existing, he's an existing God, and you know that a, our God is not a dumb and deaf God, he speaks his ear, and when he speaks, all you have to do is to accept the word as it is and apply it to your life. And the miracle behind is what you see. Hallelujah. If you can believe, all things are possible. If you can believe, all things are possible. It is a song. It's a all. 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 Your financial crisis, if you believe, it can change. Though the doctor report may be proven right by, 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 by doctor experience, but Jesus said, if you believe, the report can be revised. That's faith. That's faith. Don't go ask people. God said I should do this, but I'm thinking whether he... Mm, mm. When Elijah was about to be taken, Elisha was behind. And the sons of the prophet came to Elisha. Do you know that your master will be taken away from you? He said, I know. But why are you keep following him? There is something in his departure that will affect my life. So I must follow. Faith. You are out there. You must understand your life can never experience a dramatic change until faith is in action. It's not just talking, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. No. Jimmy said, show me your faith and I'll show you my faith by action. If you can do, if you can do, in Mark chapter 10 verse 23, 27. Jesus looked at them and said, With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. There are some said to worship. That all can't change it. There's so many, there are some treatment that all cannot prove it. There are some cries that can be changed by men. Is behind man capacity. If anything that is behind man is never behind God, it's before him. Anything that is behind man is never behind God, it's before him. If you can believe, if you can believe the miracle cash of Peter. Did not come because Jesus spoke it. It came because he lay down. He do what Jesus said. Keep doing. Keep preaching. Keep doing good. Keep going to church. Keep serving him. There's a profit in it. He said, I have not called Jacob to serve in vain. I pay him. Faith in God. Is your shield faith in God? Is your shield faith in God? Is your shield? You must understand God cannot do anything when your faith is not emotion. God cannot do anything when your faith is not emotion. It take your faith to cause prophecy to come to pass. It take your faith. It take your faith. It take your faith to come to pass. It take your faith to come to pass. It take your faith to come to pass. It take your faith. It take your faith to produce results. 
when you don't believe, you don't what you don't believe, you don't deserve. What you don't see in God, you can receive. You must, you must see what is in here. And when your eyes open to this truth, is when your freedom in life becomes guaranteed. So God is not the problem. Man is the problem. They cannot see what's in here. Many saying, God speak to me, God speak to me, God speak to me. No, he has already spoken. God, I need a word from you. He said, No, I have already sent the word. God, what are you saying? He said, I have said it before you were born. What is it? What do you want me to say again? God, I want to see you. I want to see you. You can't see me that way. You are already seeing me. You're not just anyone, you my son. To them that believe, it gave them the power to be called the sons of God. So you're not going to love for God. You have already met God. You want to see what other sees in the kingdom look in here and believe every word that proceed from this book it shall not go void it shall accomplish that which it is sent for there are things god said to our life there are declarations god made in our life the declaration will not come to pass until we see why god said in Jeremiah, God spoke to Jeremiah. He said, Jeremiah, I will make you a fortified city. I will protect you. God make all the prophetic declaration over Jeremiah. And later God asked him, what do you see? And he said, I see an almond tree in the north. And God said, yeah, you have seen correctly. And because you have seen it, I will haste it my wall what you don't see here delays in your hand what you don't see what you don't see stop believing god with your hair and start believing with your spirit because in your hair there are so many trouble that passes through our mind financial crisis marital crisis children crisis job crisis our minds is not stable but when we trust god in our heart everything that runs through our mind shall be kind because it takes the wall it takes the wall of god to transform every fabulous of our mind in confirmation to the wall of god so you must believe you must have faith you must like god to take you to the place shadrach misha and abednego in daniel they were forced to worship the image the bible said those that know their god those who know their god shall be strong not strong in physical strength but strong in the faith strong in the grace of God there was a fire waiting for all those who disobey they didn't see fire you see church let me say this if you begin to become to fear what they fear what killed them will kill you their fear is not our fear for he have not given up the spirit of fear, but the spirit of boldness and sound mind. So we don't fear what the world fear. We are not moved what moved the world. For the church shall live by faith. We move by faith in Christ Jesus. So if you have faith in him, you are unmovable. You are unstoppable. You are unshakable. No matter how the world may turn upside down, 
you have confidence, you have hope that when your redeemer shall arise, all the enemy shall be scattered. You want to move. I come to encourage you this morning. I come to bring you wall of wisdom. I come to bring you wall of revelation. You need to grow your faith. The stronger your faith, the reliable you become in the realm of the spirit. The weaker your faith, the more you become a casualty to the war of affliction. My prayer for you that your faith will grow in God. I should begin to listen to God and do what God say. You will grow in the wisdom of God and experience the benefit like others. Daniel, Shadrach, Misha, and Abednego did not see fire. Those who bowed down to the graven image saw the fire. But they didn't see it. They saw God. And the king said, let me see. Let me see. Let me see who will deliver you out of my hand. And Shadrach said, may it be known to you today. Even the God whom we serve cannot release us. We will not. That was a ground of faith. If God choose not to, that's okay with him. But that will not change him for being my God. He's my God. And the truth them in. The Bible said in Hebrew chapter 6 verse 16. He said, take on the shield of faith that you will quench the device of the enemy. So because of their faith, a bell shield around them in the fire. And they came up. Wait a minute. How many men did we throw in there? I said, we but, 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 but apostle, apostle, how will he ask such a question when he knew how much he threw in? I thought we threw three men in. I said, yeah, but I can't, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I'm seeing four persons. I'm seeing four. And 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 the fourth person, he looks like a heathen, a pagan, describing the son of God when he was not born. He looked like the son of God. Who told him? When your faith get into motion, even the heathen will know that something about you. Oh, you can do it. I can make it. You can do it. I can do it. It will fail. It can fail. For I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I can make it. It's too dangerous. I can make it. You'll survive it. I'll survive it. That's what they said. That's what they said. That's not why God said. They said this, and that's why God said. The faith of those young men preserve them in the fire. Your faith cannot be strong in God and you allow waste. It's not possible. For faith is our shield that protects us. Anything we want from God, whatever desire, it can be healing, financial stability, it can be deliverance, it can be children. It can be job problem. Whatever you need from God is the access to it is in your faith. If you can grow your faith, you can grow your life. If you can grow your faith, you can grow your healing. If you can grow your faith, you can grow everything around you. Why? Because it takes faith to move God. The Bible said, without faith, it is impossible to please him. So every man who comes to him must believe. My being in here is by faith. I believe he will take me there. And he did. So ladies and gentlemen, 
it doesn't matter how your condition may be stinking when you have faith you can say to the mountain you mountain be that removed and roll into the sea and the mountain shall be when Lazarus died is it apostle Lazarus was a good friend of Jesus when he fell sick the Bible did not mention what kind of signal was upon him but we wouldn't told that he was sick he was sick Jesus you need to come for your best friend is not there sick he said I'll be there I'll be there but I have some work to do here he spent three days when he started his journey he reached on the fourth day when Martha saw Jesus she she began to cry Jesus if you were here my brother who have died and Jesus said to her Martha that's okay your brother will live again and she said I know he will live he will come back to life on the day of resurrection Jesus said no you see faith don't postpone faith is not in the future faith is now Jesus said your brother will live again and she said I know but it's in the resurrection Jesus said no the resurrection in which you speak of is here now where you lie him in the tomb I don't know who is lying in their tomb for the voice of resurrection is here this morning and I speak to you in the name of Jesus whatever you are going through the law is sending help on your way in the name of Jesus mm. thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord and Martha said, by this time, he's thinking, by this time, by this time, by this time, Lord, by this time, you don't tell me what time I should perform healing. Jesus, I know you are the resurrection, but where he is now, he's thinking. If you know I'm the resurrection and the life, then take me there. Let me see. She said, if you say so, then I'll leave you there. And they took Jesus to the grave. And he looked up them and said, roll them with the stone. Bishop, uh, apostle, everything Jesus did there, and their expectation must be in agreement in their action just how peter said if you say so i lay down then jesus said to them roll the way the stone if you say so then we roll the stone and they roll the stone then he shouted lazarus come forth don't die heard the voice of the master and they arose bound up coming out then jesus said Un untie him and let him go fail it took the cooperation with the people and jesus instruction to cause the miracle so the war hearing the war alone is not enough jesus said where you lie him so they have to take him to the grave roll the stone they have to roll the stone jesus is not going to roll the stone 
if you want the resurrection of your brother remove the stone but jesus why you can't no i'm not going i'm not going to use my power to roll stone i can do it but it's in your power to do so until you do it you don't see the miracle so they have to roll the stone and they give jesus access in the power to demonstrate the power of god in confirmation with their faith in action so your faith is the ultimate crown of your receiving not just hearing he that heareth these words of mine and do them happy you see so there's a doing part of the world there's a doing part of the world if you can apply the world in your situation conform the situation to respond to the word of god i moved in the house some some of uh, some four years ago and they told me in this house nobody can live inside why See, there's an evil spirit that moves in the house and everybody who moves in the house cannot spend five months you pack out and at the time as a young man coming up i think i was not married i don't have no kid around me and 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 and, 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 and I, I i was desperate looking for a place to sleep so the sister in the in the church she built the house but because of the evil spirit she can stay in so the house was abandoned for a years then she said to me brother james you're looking for a place to sleep i have a place but that place is, is a horrible place where it is I love to stay in a horrible place. For the Bible says, what life, what light has in common with darkness? When light appears, darkness go out. So I don't have problem with the place. Eh? Mm. Just take me there. I just want to sleep. Jesus was sleeping in the ship while the storm, so when he arose, the storm came quiet. So take me there. She took me to the place, and I saw it was a four four barrel house, bed and everything inside. And I went in the apostle. I spent the night. <laughs> I said, Father, thank you for giving me a whole house. <laughs> the first night I slept in the house, and you hear and things like people walking in the house. You hear doors opening. Hmm. You get people in the kitchen that they are cooking. So, wow. I didn't make a move. I didn't see a word. I slept. Another brother, the following day, called me. Brother James, where are you? I said, I just moved to a new place. Can you come and see? Come spend the night with me. When he came, he said, Is that your one in the whole house? I said, Yes. And the Lord has just delivered me a free house. Thank God for the evil spirit that can have a free place to sleep. I did not fear what they fear. For Jesus said, Behold, all power has been given unto me. I give it unto you. Whatever you bound shall be bound. It was on December. December. 20 December 20 the 20th of December and the things begin to move in the house I got up in the night between the hour of two o'clock and I shouted hey! hear me tonight I speak to every creeping things every movement in this house I command you in the name of Jesus to cease now there was a cat that was rolling through the city and i spoke if you are a natural cat that rolled around you are welcome but if you are manipulated by evil spirit in the name of jesus before the 25th of december you will not see the sun until you repent apostle the cat spoke to me i was just passing by if you pass it by, then pass now. And don't pass by 
again. That was the end. From that day, I spent four years in that house. I never experienced movement of evil spirit. Whatever you say to this mountain, believe what you say and say what you believe. Don't doubt in your spirit. What you say come to pass. Hearing the war is one thing. Applying the war in your situation is another thing. You will be able to apply the war in every situation. Everything that ever confronts us on life, the answer is in this book. If you can find the key to the problem, the problem is solved. And I want to pray for you today. As you hear this war, that your faith will grow in God. There is no obstacles that are bigger than God. There's no giant that's stronger than God. If you allow the word of God to grow in your spirit, meditate on the word day and night, you will cause your way to be prosperous. May God bless you. May God strengthen you. May God give you grace. I speak to every part of your life that is not functionable to function now in the name of Jesus. Every obstacle start causing you tears. I bring an end to it now in the name of Jesus. I speak to every principalities and powers. I stand upon the word of God. Whatever that causes you tears shall cause you joy this year in the name of Jesus. May God strengthen you. May God empower you. May your day be fruitful. May you grow stronger in the law. What is stopping you from God? May it lose you now. In the name of Jesus, may God bless you. May God thank you. May God lift you up in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, God bless you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you care. For me, in such a special way, that's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise my heart oh my mind belong to you you pay the price for me Way back on Calvary, that's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled. That's why my heart is filled. 
That's why my heart is filled with praise. Amen. That's why my heart is filled with praise. There's a reason why our hearts today are filled with praise. If you are under the sound of my voice and your heart is filled with praise or thanksgiving or joy, there's a reason. God says there's a reason. Don't think that it is just by happenstance. There is a reason why we are filled with the joy of the Lord. There's a reason why we, you feeling good out there. You under the sound of my voice. There's a reason why you feeling good, why I'm feeling good, why our hearts are filled with praise. And that reason is our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you, Bishop. We praise God for you. We're going to miss you around here, but um, we know that now I, I think I'm beginning to understand something that I really couldn't fully grasp in my many years of missionary travels. I'd be in places and I'd be leaving or I'd stay a week or two or a month or whatever and people would, you know, would be so saddened by my leaving. And I, I didn't really understand. I was, I was like, you know, I, I know y'all knew that was part of me coming that I had to go, but it is possible that you make such an impact and you bless God's people's lives in such a way that they feel it when when you go. We're going to feel it here, but uh, we'll stay in communication. Lord was speaking some things in my spirit concerning uh, the line of succession in the Christian Center Church worldwide. I told Bishop Peter shortly, just, I mean, weeks before this stroke hit me. And I think about that now, and I'm like, you know, that was, God knew what was coming. But I told him, because the Lord had placed it in my spirit, that he was to be, to take over in the event that anything happened to me. This was shortly before the stroke hit. And the stroke hit, boom. And the Lord had just so spoken my spirit as you were ministering. That if anything happens to Bishop Peter, you are the next in line. We thank God for the spirit of God because he cannot be conquered. Listen to me, those of you out there. You might get rid of me. You might get rid of uh, five or ten of us. But as long as the spirit of God is in operation, the move of God will not die. The vision of God will not die. So I thank God for each of you. Uh, we appreciate you, Deacon, for earmarking that special uh, offering for Bishop Levy. We will be sure he gets that on tomorrow uh, as he has to uh, head back toward the Philadelphia area to take care of some meetings and some things up there. We are praying that God will go with him and continue to lead and guide him in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. May the Lord bless you, children of God. We here at the Christian Center, we thank God for each of you. We pray that God continues to lift you higher. And always remember, God wants to do you good. But do you want to be done good by God? He wants to do what's good. It's not God's will. God says, Robert, make sure my people understand. It's not my will that any of them should perish, but that all would come to the knowledge of life. The truth of life. And the word of, But the question is, what do you want? What do you want out of life? My prayer. If you want something different out of life, you've got to start doing some things differently. That's where salvation comes in. Salvation is basically us doing some things different in life that God may bring about some different things in our life. 
May God bless you, children of God, and heaven smile on each of you. Amen. Saints, you can reach us through email at the Church at gmail.com. Check out our website at https colon forward slash forward slash thadfg dot wixsite dot com forward slash tcccww. Feel free to join us on Talk Shoe Spreecast, YouTube, and iTunes at 9 a.m. 6 p.m. daily. On Talk Shoe, call 724 444 7444, enter ID 17959. On Spreecast, type in Robert Bryan on YouTube and the Christian Center Church channel. You can see excerpts of Apostle Robert Bryan on YouTube. Donations should be sent by using the donation button on the church website or our TalkShoe homepage. God bless you and heaven smile at you. In Jesus' name, amen.